Lovers And if you find you're tuning in to a wave Well then I don't know much about the NSA Hello everybody Hello friends Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses I'm Danny Jones And I am Samantha Jones And this is episode 166 166 What's the topic today? This is readings by Samantha, which is me. Awesome. Yay. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. Well, before we hop in that, anything you want to talk about from last week? Yes. Last week, we did ending self-destructive behavior, (laughs) and we got this really nice message from Lisa Luna. She owns Luna's Gems and Crystals. Mm -hmm. Uh, She is a sweet lady, so I wanted to read this from her. She said... Hey, girly, I'm now all caught up on your guys' podcast. I'm happy and sad at the same time. Thank you both for being such an important part of my journey to healing and spirituality. You guys are really changing lives, and I'm so grateful to have stumbled upon your podcast. Please keep doing what you're doing. You are so much appreciated. Thank Thank you, Lisa. Lisa. We love these kinds of messages. And your crystals. Yes, your crystals are beautiful. I just bought... This one, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's like a luminescent stone. Mm -hmm. And it's an angel and um, it glows in the dark. It's It's so cool. Yeah. So she's got um, an Etsy store, Luna's Gems and Crystals. So go look for it there. Yeah. Yes. So thank you for that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then we have two questions that we answer every week. This one is from Patricia. She says, I wanted to ask you, how did you pick that song for your opener on the podcast? And is there a personal meaning to the lyrics? That's a great question. Yes. Thank you. Um, Well, Patricia, I didn't write the song. I perform on it, but it's written by a very good friend of mine, Adam Gooddale. Um, You should be able to find him like Gooddale Arts and music, things like that on Facebook or YouTube. Maybe I'm not positive. But um, known him for many years. That's his song. He wrote it, wrote the lyrics. So what it truly means to him, I don't know particularly, <clears throat> but it has a, it speaks to me in a certain way. So that's why we chose it. And we didn't have to pay rights you yeah. know, to some giant <laughs> rock and roll band for using their music. And Adam was gracious to <clears throat> let us use it. Um, another important like side note of it is that my friend Rob that passed away you'll hear me talk about often on the show he's the drummer in the song and then there's another guy Sean that's um we're still friends uh really great bass player and that was mixed and produced uh along with us by John Baffa who's also a really good friend and been around the music scene for a long time so Hey. That's it. We'll play it at the end. I'll play it in its entirety at the end of this episode, just so you can hear it, because there is a whole song. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're funny. just hearing the beginning and the end of it, so... Um, yeah. On each episode, but we'll share it. And and I thanks for your question. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Patricia. It's funny, because we, you went in to make sure that you had it, because we have a new computer, mm-hmm. you know, and when you said that, like, I forget that there's an entire song here, and it's yeah. true, because we hear the beginning and the end ourselves every week, and mm-hmm. honestly, I can't tell you what the middle says, so I'm looking forward to hearing it myself. It's a great song. Yeah. I lo- I've always loved it. Adam is very talented. He very, is. Very, very talented. This is something I recorded with him back in probably like 2006 or something, so it's yeah. been, a, been a while. Very good. So thank you for that, Patricia. Thanks, Patricia. And then this one was posted in my reading group. If you don't know, I have a free reading group on Facebook. You can find it by searching free pet and pre free pet psychic and medium readings with Samantha Jones. Something along those lines. <laughs> Anyways, this was posted by Becca in in the group. She says, Do our pets understand hugs and kisses and I love yous? I thought that that was a great question because like We don't really think a lot of times the way that animals think. We think how humans think. So we just assume they know why I'm doing this. I read something a long time ago that said that when our dogs kiss us, they only kiss us to taste our face or wherever they're kissing us because we taste like salt or we taste like food or whatever. I don't think that that's the case at all because our dogs are very particular about their kisses Mm -hmm. and it's, they don't come like that. It's not like I have a, I had a mouthful of food and they want to lick my mouth. It's, there's a special bonding moment and they want to give kiss. Um, I do believe that they understand affection and Mm -hmm. love. They read the energy. 
Um, they know that you love them without you even having to say it because it's in your energy. Yeah. The words, I love you, if you say that to an animal that's you know not used to hearing it, they won't know what, what it means. Right. Just like if somebody said it to you in a foreign language, you wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just like anything else, they learn words and right. they learn to recognize, I love you. There's that dog. Remember, we were watching this recently bunny Mm -hmm. that uses the buttons oh yeah and one of the buttons that she was taught to use is i love you and she will just go and randomly hit i love you for her owner that was cool to see yeah so they know what that means absolutely i understand Mm -hmm. it yeah i agree but you have to teach it to them first it's not just you know natural but they understand like when we're kissing them that we're doing it out of affection and all that i I truly believe that yeah yeah oh that's what i meant i truly believe they know what your intention is when you're kissing and hugging and yeah. loving on them it, because it's um they can just read the energy they don't have to they don't have to actually even hear words yeah so. there was an article that came out i don't know how many years ago it was but i remember marina asking us about it and the article and a lot of people actually brought it up that it said animals don't like to be hugged especially dogs dogs don't like to be hugged and I think that's like saying that humans don't like Brussels sprouts. Right. Well, some do and some don't. Mm-hmm. Some dogs love hugs. Some dogs don't. You have to be particular with your dog. Right. Your dog may love hugs. We have three here. They all love them. But I could, you know, bring another dog in that might not. Right. It, it, it just it really is hit or miss. So. We had that trainer, dog trainer, many years ago oh, that yeah. said... You- shouldn't show your dog's affection because then they won't be as effective yeah, the training. in their training. And I was like, what? Yeah, seriously. I, ha- I am not here Am I to, supposed yeah. to throw the treat at them <laughs> when they complete the task, right? Yeah, there's a happy medium there, you yeah. know? It's like, okay, I don't know if there's some weird philosophies, but yeah, whatever. I'm sorry. Anyways, I hope that answers your question, Becca. Thanks, Becca. Yes, thank you. Uh, And then let's see. One other thing is last week we had mentioned the People's (laughs) Choice Podcast Awards. And if you haven't voted on those yet, the nominations are still open. So if you go to podcastawards.com, you create yourself a little account so they know that you're not a robot. And then you can go to Religion and Spirituality and vote for us as your favorite podcast. Yeah. And we would mucho appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Please and thank you. Yes, for sure. And then let's give our info before we start. Do it. Yeah. So you can find me at Samantha Jones Psychic Medium dot com. You can book an appointment there, all that good stuff. For us, you can reach us through email at spiritual joneses at gmail dot com and our social media is at spiritual joneses. And for you, sir. Uh for my art Jones Art Collection dot com for the web where I do sell prints of my work and for social media at D Jones Art Collection for Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. That's Very it. Good. Fantastic. All righty then. Are we ready? I'm ready. Cool. Episode 166, Readings by Samantha. Yay. So if you haven't heard one of these episodes yet, what I do is I'm going to give you a variety of different types of readings. There's some animals, there's some spirits, there's some psychic. <clears throat> um, you'll you know, hear a little bit about how this works, how I connect. Without having the person here to validate things for me, I just have to go with whatever I get. And a lot of times this is like putting puzzles together. So something may not make sense to me, but I say it. And then I hope that the person will come back and say that makes sense because of this. So then next week we'll read some of those. Yeah, most likely you get responses through the week and people will hear those responses next week. Yes. So um, and at the end, I'm going to do it last. I'm going to do something very special. Uh, I've never done this before because I've never been in this situation before, kind of. I'm going to, my friend Lynn that passed, I'm going to read her for her kids on the show. Oh, nice. What makes that special is not just that she's a friend of mine, but I've never had this yet where there's somebody that listened to the show and that I've known for a long time who Mm. passes away and is now on the other side of things. And we can hear from the other side of things, you know. Yeah. I'm excited for that. So, yes. so that's I'm going to do that last because I have a feeling it's going to be emotional for me. Okay. So let's start off very lighthearted and let's talk to Cassie's bearded dragon nugget. Oh. She said, this is nugget. Just want to know if she's happy or if there's anything she needs from me that I'm not already doing, doing or if she has anything she wants me to know. This is living, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Living. Yeah. 
Hello, friends. <laughs> yeah, cutie. Huh? I like bearded dragons. They're very good, um, like reptiles. I'm not a big fan of people that like are beginners at reptiles. Having reptiles as pets, they're mm. hard to take care of. But if you want to start somewhere, bearded dragons are good. They're good interactive. They're like little dogs, but yeah. they're lizards. So I yeah. like them. You are too cute there, Nugget. Okay, let's have mm. a talk with Nugget. He loves to eat. Or she. Is this a female? A male or female? Do you remember what I said? Let's see. She. Very good. Nugget. She loves to eat. Yeah. That was the first thing that she showed me is little worms and going and grabbing the little worms really quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Too cute. Um, you know, it's different when you talk to a reptile. They think differently. Their brains are different than something like maybe a dog or a cat. They don't think the same way. They're mm -hmm. not like, oh, my heat is good, my humidity. They don't think like that. Right. Um, but I feel like you're doing a good job with Nugget um, and that she is very happy. She, you know, this is cute. So she's obviously, you know, in a tank a lot of the time, right? And she feels like, like when you watch something from the outside and you're looking at it, you know, you see the lizard on the inside and you're watching it, she's doing the same thing from the inside. Right. And Cassie has two big dogs and she loves to watch the dogs. She is just absolutely fascinated by them. <laughs> what are these? Because she has a Great Dane and oh. a boxer. Yeah. What are these ridiculously big beasts? <laughs> um, she's very fascinated by them. So you might notice that when they're playing, especially like what I see is them kind of wrestling around and playing and I hear the, like toes tapping and stuff, that she likes to watch that. Uh and and try to figure out what are they doing because <laughs> lizards don't really do that right. like if you put li two lizards together and they play with each other they're not playing no. <laughs> they're doing one of two things yeah um so yeah let's see what else she has to say i uh i feel like she is very happy you know this is the life that she knows um so a lot of people are like, oh, you have a reptile in a tank. But this is what she knows. And she does come out of there and she is happy. So there, that's not an issue. Uh, I do feel like health-wise, she is good. Her color is good, too. Just want to make sure of all that. She, yeah, she looks really good. And I feel like she feels really good. So keep just keep doing what you're doing. She is showing me um, a spray bottle and spraying her. Like, I'm assuming that you do this to help her when she's shedding. If you're not already doing this when she's shedding, then she's showing me this so that you will do this. So, again, if you are doing it, thank you. You're doing a good job. If you're not doing it next time you see her shedding, try a squirt bottle with warm water. Just, you know, like the gentle mist. And it'll Look. help the skin to come off. Because sometimes that stuff gets stuck and it's hard for them to get it off. Got it. So, so there you go. That's Cassie and Nugget. Very cool. So, thank you. Thanks, Both guys. All right. The next one is a psychic reading. This is from Jen. She says, hi, Sam. Curious if you could help me with this topic. What can the divine and the guides tell me about ways to find healing in my life and ways to provide healing to others? Thanks for the consideration as always. Jen is, she's a very sweet person. I'm so glad that I've met her through this show. She lives here locally and she's, oh, a, yeah. um, she does like mobile vet tech work and stuff, but rescue work and all kinds of things and she's just really into the animals and i love it a kitty yeah cute. yeah she's got a picture here with the kitty so all right so let's see so the first thing that i heard for you is that when you asked this question you kind of answered your own question in a way the very first thing that you need to do to be able to heal others is to find healing yourself um how you do that is very individualized and it very much depends on where the healing needs to come from. But really like probably the hardest part I think of the healing is calling yourself out on the things that need to be healed mm -hmm. and seeing where, you know, where does this stem from? And a lot of things stem back to childhood or, or whatever and, and facing it, facing what happened and accepting it and seeing that you're not perfect, because I think you know that you're not perfect, Jen. I'm not talking about, you know, you in general. But a lot of people, um, we do feel like we're perfect. And then we have to face these things about ourselves and we go, well, it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. You know, here I thought I was perfect and, and now I have to say, uh -huh, I'm not. But we're not, none of us are. Right. And so that makes us humble when we <laughs> face the what 
what we need to face and what we need to heal that humbles us because we realize that we are human. And when we've dealt with those types of things, that's when we can start healing others. Um, An unhealed person can't really help an unhealed person. I'm not saying you have to be completely healed. I don't know that any of us will ever be completely healed from the things that have happened. I just don't. You know, every time that I, I don't think that I'm completely healed by any means, but every time that I think, okay, here's another one that I'm done with, there's another one that comes towards me to to heal that too. I agree with you though. I think that you have to be in a state of humility to allow, you know, Mm -hmm. the greater forces of nature to make changes, make positive changes. Yes, absolutely. Um, And then... So I feel like, and there's no particular thing that you need to work on here. So, so like, let's say that you feel like there's, there's just one thing that bothers you about yourself and you're like, I want to work on that. Then go for it. There's nothing that you have to specifically work on to be able to heal people. You just need to be working on yourself. You need to be humbling yourself and, and you are very humble. And so I think that um, doing some kind of healing work for you is the calling. Um, And you know what? I am very drawn to the animals for you. And when it comes to the animals, I think that we don't have to heal as much in that area to be able to heal the animals. Mm. That's a whole different kind of thing. It's more healing the people that I think we need to be able to heal our own selves. But if there is anything like... Um, if there's anything from your past that you have regret about, okay, like, uh, let's just say that there was an animal when you were a child, like for me, I have this issue and an, an animal in my childhood that I felt like didn't receive the proper care that I could have done better by that dog. You can heal that. It's important to heal that. It's important mm-hmm. to say I was a child and I'm no longer a child and I know what's right and wrong, but I didn't have any control of it then and let it go. And understand that you didn't have the control. Because you wouldn't believe how many people do hold on to things like that. I hear it all the time. I feel bad about, you know, my parents didn't treat this dog right when I was a kid. And I wish I could have done something. But you couldn't because you were a child. So we have to take those things that with the animals, if we're working with them, that we feel the guilt and and such for and heal those things. Mm -hmm. And that will give us more of a humbling and an understanding towards healing the animals as well. This is stuff that's worked for me. I'm sure other healers do different things uh, but this is it, this is what has worked for me I definitely feel like that's the area for you 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 radiate this healing energy um, it's almost like animals and people in your presence you don't even have to do anything special they just feel the warmth and the glow and that heals them in certain ways to already you know yeah. Yeah. without even having to do anything Yep. So I, I think you're on the right track. I think you know what you're supposed to be doing and you're doing it and keep doing it and you're going to be amazing with it. I think a big part of it too is believing that you're you're actually doing it. Oh, absolutely. You know, because you're working with, you know, not necessarily a handheld tool. You know, you're working with your mind in a, in a mm-hmm. lot of ways. So and it you gets just have that. Yeah, it does. But you just have to have that faith and that belief that it's working. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like at yeah. first when I would do things like heal the hiccups and stuff, mm. uh, not just the animals, but myself, mm. I was like, that's a coincidence. And then it was like every single time. And you know what's funny mm-hmm. it, and, is that this happened with us last week when my tooth was bad. Mm-hmm. I got the hiccups and I could not cure mm-hmm. them for anything. It's mm-hmm. the first time in years that I yeah. couldn't get rid of my own hiccups. And I tried and I laid there and I was so frustrated. I was even laughing. I was like, this is ridiculous. (laughs) I can't take care of myself. I can't fix this. So I asked you, come help me. Mm -hmm. And you did and you got rid of my hiccups Mm -hmm. because you believe that you could. And you know Mm -hmm. what? My energy, because of what the pain I was in, was too low for me to be able to do that. It just was. And I tried so hard, so hard. But (laughs) now that I'm, I'm healed, I would be okay. Right. You know, so funny yeah it is funny so, so anyways jen hope that that <laughs> Thanks, um, jen. helps you yeah yeah okay let's see this one <laughs> is going to be a spirit reading and these ones get me sometimes so have the tissues ready they're here okay i just realized that i don't oh wait maybe i do i have one other animal left so we'll see okay so this is ed and Ed would like us, he said, I guess the big question is why 
And where does this go? I think he means like the spiritual life. Turning into me might short circuit your, tuning into me might short circuit your receptor. (laughs) Also, my mom, Jean, has passed and with so much hate. And so I asked, can I see a picture of your mom? Let's talk to your mom. And so we're going to do that. We're going to talk to Jean and see what she has to say. Okay. So this is Jean. This is a really beautiful picture. It's a very old picture. What was the comment about passed away with hate? With hate. She passed with so much hate. Mom did? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so let's talk to mom. Jean. Uh, Okay, so they tell me things to validate who it is. It doesn't mean that they still feel this way. It just means that this is how they felt in life. Um, She felt when she was younger... Well, really her whole life, but when she was younger, especially that it was a woman's job to take care of the kids, do the cleaning, look nice, always look nice. You had to be presentable. She kind of reminds me of my grandma in that way of like Mm -hmm. jeans. Mm -hmm. Who wears jeans? Men, men wear jeans. That was a generational thing. Yeah. But she's, she says that if she was still alive, this generation, this new generation would, would make her completely crazy. Like she wouldn't understand. <laughs> she understands now, but back then she would have just been like, I got to check out of this place because these it's kids getting are, cray cray yeah, it's getting here. Cray right here. <laughs> um, she just, yeah, very conservative. Didn't, wouldn't really have gotten it all. Right. Um, I definitely wouldn't say she would have believed in any of this, um, you know, talking to spirits and all that. <laughs> and psychics and everything. So, um, but I want to talk to her about what you, you said about the hate. Um, she said, she, what she's, what she's saying is that she held on to a lot of things that happened to her mm-hmm. and things that were unfair, things that doesn't need to be talked about here. So right. it was a different time. Still saying things kind of happen nowadays. They still do. It was mm-hmm. just less talked about then. Mm-hmm. Um, there was less um, intervention and help for children and for women when they dealt with the things of, of things that your mother dealt with. Right. Um, she didn't understand why life was supposed to be this way. She had feelings and tendencies towards things that even though she was the mother, and that was the role, that is not exactly what she hoped for her life. She had things that she wanted to accomplish that she wasn't able to accomplish simply because she was a woman. Um, And so that made her angry. Those types of things, we all handle them differently. For her, it made her angry. She's also telling me something about her husband, um, that there was um, arguing, animosity, issues there that... She was very angry about, um, not that she hated her life, but uh, is this really this? Is this really it? Is this really what this life is about? This is what I have to look forward to forever? Yeah. So there was a lot of hate. There was a lot of anger. Uh, She realizes now, because she's in a different place, that she had complete control over that the whole time. Yeah. But because of what, especially in that generation, they were taught, you just do it this way. There is no other way. There is no other you way. I think there's no other way. Yeah. If you like, um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Like, let's say that, you know, your mom had some, you know, gay tendencies or something like that. She never, ever, yeah. ever would have been able to show that. Mm. It, it just, it wasn't in that generation. So with things that she felt and things that she wanted to experience in her life, she didn't get to experience them. Right. And that made her very angry. Um, now again, like she, she realizes that she did that to herself and that if she really wanted to, she could have lived the life that she wanted. We're supposed to do that while we're here. We're supposed to live the life that we want for us, no matter what that means. And that's hard. A lot of the times, especially with whatever's going on in society, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's not, if society highly frowns upon it, how are you supposed to live that lifestyle? But you're supposed to. I'm assuming, based on that picture, because it does look old, she was a housewife in the 40s or 50s. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe 60s, um, but I'm feeling more the 40s or 50s. Yeah. And I could see it from Jean's perspective, for sure, that what an uphill battle that would be, because at that point in time in our society, the women were the stay home, take care of the children, my own grandmother would have been in this era. She never 
worked a job a day in her yeah, life. She never learned how to drive a car. She never had to. She yeah. was always at home. If she needed a ride, then somebody came and got her, you know, or the husband yeah. when he got home from work, grandpa. But so it could be, I could see her point of like, I can't do this. I mean, right. this is what society says is supposed to be. But the truth is, no, you can create your own. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Reality. She's showing me something, and I don't know what this means, so you'll have to tell me, Ed, if you even know. Um, she's showing me a dishwasher, and she's showing me getting very angry with the dishwasher and, like, kicking it. <laughs> so I don't know what this means, but, you know, maybe this is... The, I mean, it looks like this is something that happened, that this was something that she took her anger out on. Um, and maybe there were other things, but, you know, the anger did come out. It didn't... Like, a lot of people stays inside. No, no it, it came out. She did... Um, like you said, Ed, she did die with a lot of anger and hate, but she wants you to know now she doesn't feel that way anymore. And she, she sees that it was her own fault. And if she could go back and change things, she would. All she can do now is try and help from the other side and try and be a supportive mother to you and, and help you and guide you and try and make right of the wrongs that she made that way, because it's too late in other ways. People don't, they don't hear her, you know, people that she feels that she needs to apologize to, mm -hmm. they don't hear her. And so she can't do anything to really help them right. um, in that way, you know, but so. she will get to at some day, yes. at some point, it, even if when it's not there. here when they get there. Yeah, for sure. So, so there you go, Ed and Jean. Thank Thanks, you guys. very much for that. Okay. And then we have another animal. This is from Patricia. She says, this domestic bunny was dumped at the school next door. First saw it July 4th, 2021. The school tore down the building that was its home, so it came to my yard. I kept an eye out. Then three months ago was the last time it was seen. Is bunny still alive or did he, she pass away under the house? Are you feeling boy or girl? Okay. Um, you know, it was interesting because, um... I, for a brief moment, thought, I don't have any animals that have passed. And something stopped me and said, no, you do. And I hadn't connected to this bunny yet. I wasn't sure. So I do feel like this bunny has passed. Okay. Um, let's see what other information <clears throat> I can get for you. But I don't feel under the house. I don't feel that's what happened. Um, I'm feeling this was some sort of predator. Mm. Um, and it, But it was quick, though. And I keep hearing he, so I'm going to say he. Um, he did survive a long time for being a domestic bunny. Uh, and so what he's telling me is, I don't necessarily know if he was dumped, but he he did have a home before. Um, so whether he was just dropped there or he got out or whatever, his life before was worse than after he was dumped or, or escaped or whatever it was that happened. Um, so don't feel sorry for him because it was better that he got away from the family that had him. I see two very small kids and a very small hutch outside. Um, yeah, this is, it was, it was better. Um, he got to be free and it's not necessarily, I'm not, I'm not advocating for letting a bunny loose. Okay. Because domestic animals should never be released like that, but he knew how to take care of himself. Um, he found water, he found food and you helped him and, and that kind of thing. So he did survive. Okay. And he wasn't miserable. He was not before he was dumped. He was not, um, like loved or anything like that. He, so he didn't know that life. So like people feel sorry for an animal. Oh, he didn't know what love is, but he didn't, he didn't know. That's the thing. He didn't know he was missing something mm -hmm. and that doesn't make it right that he missed out on that. Right. It just is a little bit of a comfort and knowing that while he was alive, he wasn't sitting there going, man, I wish I had a human to hug me. He wasn't thinking that, you know, because he had never had that before. So it wasn't even in his mind. So he was very happy uh, out there just doing his thing. Um, but, yeah, I do feel like he has passed. And he thanks you for helping him for that time. And he does tell me that sometimes he stressed you out 
um, probably because he's been missing for three months. I'm assuming that's yeah. what he's talking about. Um, and he's very sorry <clears throat> for stressing you out. He hopes that now that you can, you know, kind of move on from this. Mm -hmm. so. so I hope that that helps Patricia. Thanks, Bunny and Patricia. Yeah, thank you, Bunny and Patricia. Okay, what do we got next? And how much time we got? Okay, we're good. Yep. All right, let's do, this is a psychic reading for Crystal. She says, hey, Samantha, thanks for the opportunity. I'm so confused about what my next career should be. Right now, I'm pretty anchored down with domestic life, but that won't be forever. I've already had three different careers, medical, residential property management, and cosmetology. I'm not interested in going back to any of those. I'm wondering if the other side has any input or direction. Thank you. So it's funny because when I put this episode together, I go through and I take screenshots, right? And I was like, oh, I want to know. I want to know what she's supposed to do. But I won't know until I go in and do the reading. <laughs> so it's funny. I'm like, what is it? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? <laughs> so let's find out. So you're very good with people. Um, so I would stay away from something that is uh, a job that you do by yourself. Uh, definitely you are the type of person that the world needs out there because you have an infectious smile. Mm. And so even on like your bad days, you know how to make somebody feel good about themselves and that helps you feel good. And so you're more of an extrovert than an introvert. I feel, um, at least that's what you radiate, uh, in very good ways. Uh, let's see if they want to tell us what you're supposed to do. So they're telling me that they're, you know what you're supposed to do. They're telling me that you have thought about this and that there is one thing that stands out to you. Um, and it, I feel like it's very much around helping people. Um, not necessarily like it could be something. I don't want to say cosmetology. I know you've been down that road, but something along the lines of like fashion or, or styling, maybe styling or, um, Something like that. Um, helping people to style. I don't know. That is kind of what I'm feeling. Cause, but it's not like um, a nurse or something like that. Not, not, nothing like that. Um, I feel like you could do this independently. Uh, you don't need to work for anybody but yourself, um, which would be a great... We, and now you're just doing domestic work, so you could start this up from home. Um, I see flowers... And I see weddings. Okay, so maybe this has something to do with wedding coordinating, styling for a wedding. Um, I can't wait for her to say, no. tell me what this is about. Cool. Um, this is how it develops. And if she was sitting here or whatever, I, I could say, you know, what does this mean? But she's yeah. not. So we just go with it. Um, let me see what else I can get for you. Um, they do want you to work on your spiritual side. You do work on this already. But what they're talking about is... Um, Reiki, healing, those types of things. Um, I'm seeing crystals. Um, so healing in those forms. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be for other people, but for yourself as well. It helps you. It keeps you calm. Um, learning to center yourself has, has helped you a lot. I feel like you've come a long way. Um, and they want you to keep doing those things. Don't forget about your daily affirmations to yourself. Um, there's something else that you used to do daily. I don't know if it's meditate or yoga, something like that. Go back to doing that every day is what they're telling me. So, so there you go, Crystal. I hope Thank that you. helps you. And you'll have to let me know what they're talking about. <laughs> Flowers and weddings. Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah. I love it when it develops because I just sit here and wait for the movie to play. I'm like, come on. Yeah. What are you going to show me next? <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is a psychic reading. I mean, not a psychic reading. This is a medium reading. This is Amy. Um, she says, I would love to hear from my dad, Keith, and if he has any messages for me and my family. He passed away six months ago, and I think I am ready for a reading. Thank you. Okay, Keith. Keith was sick for a while, I feel like. Because um, I feel like his organs were we're battling inside of him. Uh, it's that's very interesting. I don't want to say he suffered. Like I hate to say that, but he he battled 
whatever this was that was going on inside of his body, he was battling. It kind of feels like a cancer. A lot of times when I see cancer, it's it's like a congestion um, and an, an angry kind of like cell multiplying type thing. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Um, he really wants you to know. <laughs> so he's telling me that he didn't understand a lot of the things that you were into when he was alive. Um, Amy's very much, I, I know her because I know her through my friend, Joe. Mm -hmm. um, she's a Disney freak and Comic-Con and she's into all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is he didn't really get it while he was alive. He supported her. Anything that she wanted, he would support her, but he didn't really get it. Right. And what he's saying now is that, you know what, people, it's not about getting it. Mm -mm. It's about letting your kids be who they are yep. and just you're never going to totally get it because it's not your generation nope. so just accept who they are and so he wants you to know that he always has and always will accept you for exactly who you are and he loves to watch how excited you get like he knows how much you love disney and going to disney and he had seen all that you know when you would go and come home and, and whatever but this is different because now he can actually get inside of your head when you're in places like that. It's not just seeing it from the outside. It's right. actually experiencing it through your eyes. Mm -hmm. And he can see the excitement that it gives you and how much you enjoy things like that. And he's so grateful that you have something that you love as much as the things that you're into. There's other stuff, too. I know she likes like cosplay and stuff like that. Um, but he, he really likes to watch you do that stuff and experience it with you. So he <laughs> wants you to know. That's cool. Yeah. That, and he's always there with you. Uh, let's see what else he wants to say. He's very glad that you have come to me for this. Um, it's interesting to watch how people do this, that, you know, that sometimes they're already in the podcast group when things happen, but they don't really talk a lot. Mm -hmm. And then something happens and they, they eventually get to the point where they feel like, okay, I'm ready to reach out. Right. So he's very glad that you finally felt the need to reach out. Um, if you ever want a full reading, let me know because he does have a lot to say. Um, he could go on for hours. He says, um, he loved the talks that he would have with you and he misses those. Um, he wishes that, you know, he could, he knows that you miss those and that he could continue to have those with you. So he really enjoys the fact that he can talk to you through a medium. He is sending you signs so that he can communicate with you as well. But he understands that, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily hear him, but he wants you to keep an eye out for all of the signs. Um, and one of those is, that he's mentioning is his name. Um, I'm seeing things like people's name tags um, at Disneyland or, you know, things like that, places that are important to you. Um, just randomly hearing somebody call out his name, um, <clears throat> things like that, that he does to get your attention. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, he got me. It's again one of those when he was saying that um, he was excited that she was open to this finally yeah and to communicate with him and i i flashed to that image of everybody kind of hanging around on the other side and all of a sudden the pagers like, yeah <laughs> uh, mr roberts you have a phone call line one mr roberts line one your daughter is ready to speak with you and now. then the spirit runs up like oh my god i've been waiting forever for this <laughs> it's true it's like the first night that my abilities happened there was a line i remember my mom yeah. going there's a line here and i'm just ushering him <laughs> in exactly. one at a time that's solely how i envision it yeah totally so <laughs> so he is very glad that he was able to come through and, and talk to you and he loves you very much and he loves uh the rest of the family um he's blowing kisses and he says to tell your mother that he will always love her so oh yeah. sweet so there we go for Amy and Keith. Thanks, guys. Yes, thanks. Okay. I have another psychic reading. This is Kirsty. She says, I would love a reading on myself if you are drawn to me. I'm feeling a little lost lately with where I should go next. Feel like I'm just floating about not really doing much and just lacking motivation with life in general. I've also been slowly tapping into my abilities, which I feel I'm also blocking at the same time as I feel scared to go down the rabbit hole. I would love to hear anything you get. Okay, Kirsty, let's see what we get for you. Fear. Fear is holding you back. It's trapping you. Um, and you know what? That's normal for, for us, for humans. Mm -hmm. We do. We get stuck in this thing of, 
but what if it doesn't go this way? But what if I can't do this? What if I'm wrong? Like, you know, with your abilities, I hear this all the time. Right. I actually did a reading for a lady the other night that told me, I just don't trust my own abilities. Right. You know what? It took me a couple of years as a professional medium for yeah. me to really trust my abilities. Mm -hmm. It takes time because yeah. really you do. You feel like I'm just getting lucky. You'd be overwhelmed if it happened overnight, and you wouldn't see the value as much, I think. Yeah. Like, anything that takes time to build, we we tend to value it more. Yes, absolutely. Um, sometimes when you're blocked, and I have this same thing, when you're blocked, you misinterpret things that are told to you, and that's frustrating. Um but they want you to know that you can change those things. So like, let's, let's just say whatever you hear, like, um, you feel like you're going to drop a glass. Okay. And then it turns out that y you drop a plate. Okay. I'm just throwing <clears throat> these things out. Cause it's, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, um, you knew something was coming. You knew you were going to drop something. You just didn't see exactly right what it was. That's because you're a little bit blocked. You're not exactly seeing what you need to see. It's at moments when those things happen that they're trying to tell you to, to meditate, to get out of your own head, to um, find a way to reconnect yourself because you are connected. You're just not letting it happen all the way. And, and I'm guilty of that too. I, yeah. I, I recognize when that happens. Um, and it is their way of saying you're here, but you're not, yeah. you know, uh, let's see what else you said here. Lacking motivation, not really doing much. Um, you know, I would be lying if I didn't say I was guilty of that myself. I think we all do that. And what is, what is the answer when we aren't feeling motivated or we're feeling like, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Well, the only one that's going to pull you out of that is yourself. Yeah. And that's a hard realization to go, man, I have complete control of this. <clears throat> you know, I could either continue to not do anything or I could start this now. But I think as humans, a lot of us, we feel like it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and we don't want to do the work. We just right. want it to be given to us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like who wants to cook the meal when you can just have it brought to yeah. you? You know, uh, I get that. You know, I understand that fear like can sometimes be crippling. Where all you it makes you feel like you've almost you're frozen in place, yeah, and you don't know what move to take next, and that's probably the one thing that probably the biggest message besides love and compassion that I hear from the other side is we all wasted too much time on being afraid, yeah, and, the and angry and all of it, yeah, and so when you think about your next move or your next endeavor or whatever it is you're pondering or that maybe you're afraid of moving towards or away from consider the possibilities not working out as you anticipate, but consider the possibility of that working out even better. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, and I speak in that from my own experience, like for example, music, um, been playing with this group for a while and trying to build something. I'm trying to build something. We are trying to build something wonderful, magical, but good. Yeah. And with that came the departure of some of these people and then the entrance of others. Yeah. And as much as that seemed inconvenient to me at the time and frustrating and like, when's it going to stop? You know, the, the foundation stop cracking and breaking. Yeah. Is it going to just sit still and be finally a foundation? That takes time. Yeah. But it actually ended up better. Yes. Yeah. And and that's where the universe tests us, really, mm -hmm. is are you just going to let a dream go or are you right. going to continue with it no matter what it means? It, I think that for me, when I feel like lost and, and stuff, I ask myself, well, what's where's the test here? Mm -hmm. What are they trying to tell me now? Because there's always a reason, you know, and, but it really is about self-control and putting yourself back on that track and saying, I, I have to keep going. I have to keep going with whatever it is that you're working on. We all have our own things. Mm -hmm. I, I have to keep going. This is what I'm here for. Um, and there's nobody that's going to come and do that for you. It's just getting yourself up and doing it yeah we have to you know kind of get out of our own way and not allow fear to let us miss a wonderful opportunity yeah in life i'm also hearing go down the rabbit hole yeah that struck me as interesting can you read that yes part again 
I have been slowly tapping into my abilities, which I feel I'm also blocking at the same time as I feel scared to go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, okay, so that's what they were talking about. You are blocking them, and so that's why bits and pieces are only coming through. Yeah, because I when, uh, as soon as you've read that part, I heard, no, they want you yes. to op- open that up. They you, want yeah. you to go down and start asking all those m- maybe most intricate, intricate questions you could possibly think of. Mm-hmm. Ponder it all. Yep. Go down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. It's it's um, scary. It is. I'm not going to lie. But the way that it changes your life once you do and you go with it and you just keep letting it take you wherever it's going to take you, mm-hmm. it can change your life so dramatically for the better. Yeah. It's just it's worth it. You know, mm-hmm. don't fear it, this this life. I know we talk about this a lot about it being a simulation. Try and think of it like that, like a video game, yeah. like a movie of what is this character supposed to do next? What are they right. here for? You know, and then do that. Mm-hmm. Do what that character is supposed to do next. It, and not this isn't to scare you or anybody for that matter, but I'm still in the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole is oh, my yeah. existence, you know, uh-huh. my ability to consciously think and ponder and ask certain questions be them complicated or not, that is it. That's what keeps me interested. Yeah, me too. And so the more that I start going, oh, the hell man built the pyramids yeah. by lifting a bunch of three-ton <laughs> stones, Basically, you know, labor, I can't yeah. swallow mm-hmm. certain things anymore. I just can't. Yeah, totally. But that's because I went down the rabbit hole. Yep. I would do it. I'd yeah. go. I would just let it go. Yep. So there is for Christy or Thanks. Kirsty. Sorry, Thanks, Kirsty. Okay, now I got one more, and that's we're gonna do Lynn's reading okay. now. Okay. So first, I want to say there were a few other readings that because what I do <clears throat> is I put up a thing in the discussion group when we do these episodes that if you want to do a reading on the show to post your information. Um, I really try and make sure that everybody gets a reading. So if you posted somebody that I've already read on the show, I usually don't read that same person again. So if you didn't get a reading today, but you did post for one, that's why. I wanted to give other people a chance. to Sharing is caring. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk to Lynn. So um, Lynn is a friend of mine. She was a pet sitter that when I had my pet sitting business in Vegas that I hired to help me and we've stayed, we stayed friends. That was probably like, I want to say 2006, 2007. Uh, and then she became a listener of the show and we would talk often about, you know, her thoughts and, um, different things. And I would help her with her animals and stuff. So she died suddenly from a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I want to say like a month or so, maybe a little bit more. Um, and very suddenly. So, um, I, because of, I, I knew Lynn, I knew of her kids, but I never really got a chance to talk to them. Mm. So her daughter, Skylar followed me on Instagram. Actually, both of her kids did. Um, and so her daughter asked me, you know, I told her when you're ready, I'll do a reading for you. And so we were going to do that today. And I felt this really weird push of do that reading on the show show your listeners how this works. So because death is a natural part Mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, she's not the only listener that's going to die. We're all going to die there. Mm -hmm. So this is going to happen with other people too. And so it's good for us to kind of see how it works and, and what, you know, people think when they go to the other side and, and blah, blah, blah. There's a whole lot of reasons why I feel like she wanted me to do this reading on the show. Cool. Um, so, so like I said, it'll probably be emotional for me, but you got tissues. (sighs) <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I've already been emotional because I have a family friend who has brain cancer and it's end stage. And so I was crying about that yesterday. And yeah. so now it's like I'm still hung over from that cry. Um, life has been interesting this year. I feel like we've lost a lot of people yeah. and it, it's um, it's been tough. So anyways, let's talk to Lynn. Lynn's happy. She does like, stop your whining. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> what are you crying about? Okay. I just got here and you're crying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just we're human and we look at it like I can't believe this person's gone. I can't believe I'll never, you know, to talk to them again. But right. I am. I'm talking to her again. So yeah. um, and her kids really needed this, too. She really wants them 
both to know how sorry she is because she did not plan for things to go this way. She did not know as a human, this was not something that she knew was coming. Um, No suspicion at all is what she's telling me. But she says that that's good because if a lot of us did know that our time was coming to an end, it, you know, some of us would maybe do certain things better, but a lot of us would just go into this deep depression and not be able to deal with it. So she's like, so sometimes it's just better. Yeah. She's like, it's kind of the easy way out, at least for her. Yeah. What it does to the kids is a whole other thing. Um, so it was important for her to get through to her kids (laughs) that she's okay that she loves them so much. Sorry. It's okay. Take your time. And she's with them every day. And she's so proud of her daughter for um, what she has done since she has passed away. She stepped in. She didn't, without even like second guessing like some people go into a depression and they can't deal with things she just stepped in there and went no i have to get things taken care of i have to deal with this now yeah you know i think she's talking about you know your her living space um you know making sure that that her affairs were in order her dog especially um it's interesting because lynn had a dog that passed away not long ago that we did a reading on. And then shortly before that, she had a bird that flew away and we validated in that reading. When I talked to her, her dog, um, that the bird had also passed away. So I see the three of them together and I feel like Patricio, the little dog, um, he's getting older, but she's not ready to take him yet. She wants you to be able to enjoy him for a while because that is a direct connection to her. Um, and she's so, so, so grateful for you for taking care of him. Mm. Um, he's happy. I've talked to him. I've explained to him what happened. He's okay. He's adjusted. Um, he misses her, of course, but he loves Skylar. And so it, that's great. Um, Okay, for her son, Zach, she's so proud of you. And she hopes that you are proud of how she stood up for you. How she she was so proud. The pride in her, quote, pride. You just are who you want to be. And she loves that about you. You don't care what other people think. And and mom loves you so much. God, this sucks. Sorry, guys. That's okay. It's your friend. I know. (laughs) You know, a long time friend. It's it's okay. You're supposed to feel. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's different. This is a very different experience for me. And so getting on here and crying like this is, um, I don't want to, you know ruin their reading right i was wondering if maybe i could ask her a question sure um because you've talked about her before and that lynn was really in good shape real fit um but she shared with you that she realized after she passed i'm based on i'm guessing what she was shown is that she didn't drink enough water yeah in life and that helps thin our blood yeah naturally And this is part of the reason um, she had a heart attack. So because it was so sudden and like you had no clues or any signs prior to now that she's been there, has she learned? Is this for a greater like, is there something else that she has to do? Right. I understand what you mean. Tend to like maybe oversee from that side to this side, you know? Um, so she says, that's a very good question. And she wants us to know, like, we've talked about how my mother was given a a choice Mm -hmm. when she went there. Lynn Mm -hmm. was not given a choice. Um, this was the way this was supposed to go. This is the way that her story was written. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was time. Um, there are reasons, but the biggest reason she's saying is it was her time. Um, 
And that's hard for us to understand because she was 65 years old. Yeah, how Pretty young. Yeah. How did you accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish in this life? And she <clears> said <throat> she did. She mm. said she raised two beautiful kids. Wow. That she experienced love. That she experienced divorce. She experienced so much that she just, she, it was just time. And it doesn't make sense, but it will when we get there. Right. Um. So to answer your question, it's not necessarily for like, I can help my kids more from the other side. She right. can. She absolutely can. And she will. But that <clears throat> wasn't a driving force behind this. This was just the end of the game. Right. The end of the, the movie. Right. Um, and her kids will learn to really, they will learn to communicate better with her. And she's really looking forward to that. That takes time. She doesn't want you to feel like you have to do that overnight. But the signs that you're seeing that you believe are her, they are. Cool. Um, when you do things, Skylar, out in the wilderness, when you, you know, she loved to be outside, Lynn, you'll be able to feel her even more when you're out in nature and surrounded by the elements that she loved and the things that you two used to do together. You're really going to be able to feel her. And sometimes that will come with that overwhelming sense of, I have to cry right now. And that usually is because we feel their presence. Yeah. It's not, I mean, we do need to cry when we lose somebody, but yeah. that's not what it's about. It's I about... feel her right now. Now I've never met her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's awesome. Let me tell you, this is a really kind of, as, as much as it sucks that she's gone, this has been a really cool experience for me because I knew what her energy was in, in, you know, as a person. And now I feel it. Like yeah. I would only feel it when I was around her or directly talking to her. Mm -hmm. And now it's like random. It just comes in and it hits me. Wow. You know, it, it's um, it's interesting. But I realize now I've learned a lot from that. I, I realize that they do that to show us that they're around. And all of a sudden I will just be doing something and I'll hear some her say something. Like the other day I just randomly heard her laughing. You know, it's like I haven't heard her laughing in forever, but I heard her laughing <laughs> just randomly. Um, I also, uh, Skylar and Zach, so you know, um, I uh, felt the need to sponsor a dog at a shelter a few weeks back. And I felt this really, really strong pull. I saw this dog on Facebook and it's been in foster for a long time. And something told me to go and pay to sponsor the dog. And I told you, mm -hmm. like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Not that I don't do things like that. This was just out of the ordinary for me because I, I like, usually do certain things. And so this was just out of the ordinary. And um, I realized afterwards that that was for Lynn, that that was, that was to help carry on her memory because that's what she wants. Yeah. She wants us all to, to do things for the animals because they are magic themselves. Yeah. And we are lucky to have them. Yeah, we are. So Sounds there we cool. go. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. And family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Losing a friend is tough. Yeah. No matter whether you talked yesterday or 10 years ago or, you know, yeah. because you carry those memories and, you know, we, sometimes we have regrets that we hold on to. With Lynn, I can say I don't really have any regrets. Like right. we had a good friendship and, and talked and stuff. Um, but this friend family friend that I tell you, was telling you about that has brain cancer, I do have things that I need to say before she goes. And yeah. I think that we all could learn um, from these spirits to do these types of things before we go to say the things we need to say because yeah. life can be taken from us. And, you know, so quickly, I mean, this happened, you know, it's crazy how fast things happen. So um, I mean, even if you feel that nudge of, questioning your in your mind of should i yes yeah. you know to me that's a sign that you should it is yeah you should you know so you know within reason whatever the situation is but i feel like that's a nudge from your higher self to say seize this moment because it may not be there forever you know oh i totally agree yeah as hard as it is right. it, it's there's just things that you know <clears throat> we're put here to do and and a lot of those things are difficult, right. but they heal us and they help us. And things like this, being able to um, connect people to their loved ones, to their animals, it helps to heal things. And mm -hmm. I love being able to do that. So I'm glad that I can do that. Yeah. But I do strongly encourage people to 
do these things before the person passes away to talk to them. If you have things that need to be said, um, don't wait until they're gone because that just leaves a lot of us with guilt and stuff, um, right. you know. So, anyways, there's the reading. That was a good one. Yay. Very so, good. thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yes, thank you, everybody, for those. It was nice to see Samantha in action. <laughs> I see it all the time, but you'll get to hear it. You know, most most of you guys will probably respond with updates as to what yeah. she shared. But um, Yeah, I like doing these episodes. I knew that the Linwood was going to be emotional, so that's why I put it at the end. Um, but, I mean, they all are. It's it's And like I said, it's the energy a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, with somebody like Lynn, yeah, there's emotion there. But like when I get, start like crying over other people's relatives and stuff, yeah. it's not that death makes me sad. Mm -hmm. It's that I feel them. Mm -hmm. I feel them so strong and their love and what they're here for and what they want us to do. And they want us to live our lives and enjoy it and be happy and do the things we want to do. They don't want us to stifle ourselves and be miserable and, you know, mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Very cool. Yay. Well, that was good. Good episode. Yay. I know Excellent. it's a little taxing on you there. But... <laughs> I'm okay. I think um, I was going to do this reading for Skylar today anyway, so I knew that that was going to be a part of it. Right. Um, so it is what it is, you know. Um, but I love to do these. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. And next week we'll go back to our series that we're on talking yeah. about, you know, self-development and stuff like that we just throw these in there now and then shake it up a little yeah and we were out of town so yes, it's, we were. when we go out of town it's, it's nice for us to have a complete vacation yes. and you know so we yeah. took a trip to the sequoias that we did um national park and it was wonderful it was kind of warm yeah but it was wonderful and um samantha and marina and marina's friend eliza uh, have never been there, so they got to see it for the first time, and it was just I'm grateful that they wanted to go because I wanted to go so bad. <laughs> and I could just, um, I can still feel it, like yeah. still kind of stored in me that energy that I get from it, you know. So, yeah, and a big shout out to Amanda yes. Yarrington Bird. No, 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 <laughs> she said, Do not call me Amanda Yarrington Bird, do not call me that. Even if I'm missing, don't call me Amanda Yearing to Burn. Okay, okay. so Amanda well, Burn. Shout out to Auntie Amanda. Yeah, Auntie Amanda. For pet sitting all the doggies while we were gone and watching the house. Yes, we appreciate it. Thank you so do. much. We love yes, you. Yes, we do. We love you. And to best pet sitter ever. So yeah. The dogs didn't even miss us. We came home and it was like we were never gone. Yes. That's the way I like it. So thanks so much. Yes. Well, before we say goodbye to everybody, want to share your information one more time? Yes, you can find me at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. You can schedule an appointment there. Uh, or you can uh, find us at Spiritual Joneses for social media or email us spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. And don't forget about those podcast awards, podcastawards.com. Yeah. And we appreciate it. Please. Yay. Thank you. Cool. Uh, for me, for my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web, um, where I do sell prints of my work. And then for social media, at djonesartcollection for Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Yay. And that's it. Um, stick around at the end of this episode. Like I said, we're yes. going to play the the theme song for our podcast, which the title of the song is called Real God, written by Adam Goodale and performed by Adam Myself, Rob Brown, Sean Davis, and Brad. I'm forgetting your last name, Brad. I'm sorry. On keyboard. So, blah, blah, blah. so that's it. Yay. And we'll play that right when we say goodbye here. That's awesome. Well, we hope everybody has a great week. That we do. And until next week, peace and love. Tuning into a wave, well then 
guy Don't know much about the NSA Don't know much about the insane. 